Now, I've had to zoom this right in because um, if I zoom out, it's dark and I'm not moving the workshop around to do this. That would be silly. So what we've got here is obviously gearbox, right? There's the release arm. Now we have ordered a new one of these, as I say, but what we've got to do now is get that one out. The nose I'm not too worried about, I've done those before. For the life of me, I have no idea how that comes out. It looks to me, there's nothing retaining it. It's almost just like it, it just pulls out. That is in there. How would you remove that? There's no circlet. You can't get to the bottom of it. There's a bush, what looks like a bush at the bottom. Surely you just don't lever it out. People know what they're doing watching this going, no, don't do that. Am I going to have to go and consult Google again? Hmm, yes, I am because otherwise I'm going to get impatient and break something. Right, so I'm not having a good time. This shaft is shafting me. This. So that's what the release bearing, uh, sorry, release arm moves on. There's the top of it. That's all you get. That all appears to be metal. The bit underneath could be plastic, possibly. For the life of me, I can't see how it comes out. I mean, it is in there. All I've managed to get out of people so far is, oh yeah, they're a pig to get out, but no one's actually suggested how it comes out. It's not obvious. So yeah, that's all good. But hey, the clutch is in. Whee. This gets bloody hot. I once set fire to petrol with it. In my face. It be a case of heating up the, um, the alloy around it. Cecily, this is not helping. Of course, technically, it's not on Cecily, is it? Cecily's up there. Trying to see if that ball joint will come out. I'm hoping that my special ball joint socket, which is one of these, um, I'm hoping that, that will work. This is actually for a BX or Peugeot 405, but eight and a half look the same. Yeah, it's not too bad that one, but I spoke to owner last night and he said, no, I do both, don't muck about. So basically the ball joints are screwed in upside down. They're also very rusty. Ugh. Can I see what's happened there? You can't see what's happened there because I'm really not prepared at all. Basically there's the four slots around the edge of the ball joint. One of them those four teeth to go in. One of them won't go in, and I wondered why, and it would be because the dust shield on that one is bent in the way. Now, if Cecily wants to behave, I'll just put this tool on here. Well, if Cecily wants to behave, this tool will go on first, which it's not even doing it. And then with this tool on, and the windy gun, the ball joint will simply unwind. Do I think the ball joint will simply unwind? No. I've done too many BX ball joints to know that doesn't often happen. Let's try it. It would be a result at least. <laughs> oh, I'm going to need my goggles. 
There's a lot of crud in there. Oh, I don't know, I think it's moved a tiny bit. I've also got the car up too high. Why have I done that? Try doing it up a bit first. If you listen closely, you can hear it laughing. Oh, we've had a rather negative finish to the day, yeah? This was supposed... I was coming in this morning thinking I'd have the gearbox back on. Um. It's been fairly negative. Can't get that undone. That one won't come undone. <sighs> it's not budging. It's just a precursor of how the rear brakes are going to go. Right. I've run out of time anyway. Well, that's a slightly negative finish to the day. Um, Basically, this, that, days go like that, especially in the motor trade. Um, so I've come in this morning, full of beans, ready to go. I've fitted the clutch and flywheel to the engine, which is a total of 14 volts. And spent an hour or so looking for parts. Yeah, that was a bit rubbish, wasn't it? Quite deflating. That was a sweet volley though. Yeah, that's quite deflating. Uh, oh, L'Oreal there. Do a little bit of L'Oreal. Um, yeah, that's quite, quite annoying. Cecily has started to fight back. Right, Marshall, go and watch this kid's football game. I have got a kid playing, I'm not weird. And then... Uh, Probably go home and edit the first video I do on this. Or maybe just lay down and cry. Well now, it's been a few hours since the first C5 video went live on my channel. And in that time frame, the limited time that it's been up, uh, the views on this car have been far higher than anything I've done before. BX, SM, Stupid Iveco Van, the tiny bit I've done on a Reliant Fox. There's more to come on that. Um, or is there? Maybe I should drop all of it. Maybe I should just do Citroen C5s, because that seems to be what everyone wants to see. So I left yesterday on a bit of a bum note. We've had some goodies come through the post. Look. Look at that. That's one of them. Oh, it goes around that way. Look how nice that will be when that's in there. Eh? Hey? Of course, can't put it in there because I can't get that one out. The other thing that's come is this little box with a nose in it. And that will go, that will go in there. And sit, it won't, obviously I'll take the other one out first. Got a seal built into it, but the release bearing slides up and down on this tube like so yeah and on that one it will be all loose because it's worn so that's good i really am scratching my head about this thing so i've done some more research spoke to some people last night and it turns out there is lo and behold a special tool you need to pull this out it's about that long it looks like a deep socket um, it's common, kind of like a windscreen wiper puller, but in reverse, and I don't have one. So I went to visit some of the local garages around here uh, and asked them if they've got a tool, because I'm guessing they've done one of these before, because this is a very similar setup to what you get on vans and things like that. And they said they don't bother changing them. Great. So now I've had to order a tool. Now, luckily, the tool was only £23, and it will be useful, because I think this gearbox is the one I'm going to have in my upcoming project um, but 
yeah, I don't have the tool here. And it doesn't look like I'm going to get the tool today either. So I'm not putting the gearbox back in again. Brilliant. Here's the arm. That looks about right. In fact, it looks spot on. I think it's. I think that's even a Citroen part number. It certainly looks it. An original one. So yeah, I'm out of my comfort zone. So I'm going to go back into my comfort zone. I'm going to walk away and work on B axes. No, I'm not. I'm going to put the gearbox to one side, literally. I'm going to have a look at some brakes. Now, as you can see, this is a brake. Good, isn't it? Brake caliper, brake disc. Disc spins round. Brake caliper has pads in it. You push the pedal. Brake pads pinch the brake disc. Stops it spinning. Now, normally you'd have a handbrake on the back of this. But this one, you don't. The reason you don't is that it has a handbrake on the front wheel. Both the front wheels. And because of that, the calipers aren't actually handed. So here's one I made earlier, and this is really similar to the one we had on the I showed on the BX the other day. So that's one of these. I've had a new caliper sent. There should actually be two, but they've only sent one. And then when questioned, they've asked to send a picture, asked us to send a picture of what we received. I can't help but think if we were going to lie and say that we had one of these calipers missing and they wanted a picture we would just take a picture of one but we don't we actually only have one so that will go on here these bolts in here i originally thought these were part of the kit but they're actually and this is really a bit dodgy really they should they should tell people this because it might not be obvious that that's not the right part but that's only a 4.8 tensile bolt look here there we go there you go well basically that's good for like beds and wardrobes and things like that it's not good for brakes so those are not suitable to use in there but if you were doing this on your driveway and you didn't know what those numbers meant a bit iffy really i don't think there's any paperwork in there Oh, hang on. Maybe there is. Maybe there is. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Nope. It says fit and adjust the handbrake cable. <sighs> so, yeah, these calipers are actually made of two halves. That's what these bolts are doing. They're just holding it in transit. Um, so they're made of two halves. They split and they are dual piston. There's a piston in each side. Calipers aren't actually handed because if you wanted to put this caliper on the other side, all you do is take the bleed nipple out and put it on that side and put the pipe that goes into the caliper on this side. Fitting these is a job I've been tasked with because the owner is filled with trepidation about doing it. Apparently they're a nightmare. I could understand maybe they're a bit reluctant, but they're only the same as, well, it's the same concept as a BX. So how hard can it be? Let's see how bad these bolts are. I thought we were in trouble to start with, but... That one moved. Yeah, that's pretty tight, but it is moving. I'd say sometimes it helps just to go undo it a bit and then tighten it back up again, and it allows the threads to clear. A bit of spray. I did put some on yesterday, but it appears to have disappeared. I'm feeling fairly confident I can get that off. <laughs> a little bit on the uh, tight side it's starting to bind up because the thing is you've got an alloy caliper and a steel bolt what could go wrong <laughs> I 
Go back in. And then back out. Oh, Roger. Actually, it has undone. <laughs> come on, come on. Starting. Come on. I think there might actually be some holes there. For... Oh, there are. Look. You see in here, you can just see thread. So there's me trying to get a little bit of oil in, in the end, all I've got to do is, and I've already done that one, but, oh yeah, that's got, there's a lot of crud in there. That is an excellent idea. Who, whose idea was it to put that hole there? Well done you, whoever that was. It's going to hurt. Be careful because it's got a rigid pipe in the top there. And you may ask yourself, where is my beautiful house? And you might ask why I'm not disconnecting that pipe yet. Well, I don't want to drain the uh, brake system. I don't want to get air in it. We will be changing the brake fluid, but I'll just be flushing new fluid through on top of the old to force the old stuff out and put new through it, um, which isn't, it's not quite as an efficient way in terms of saving money, um, but given that this car isn't gonna need it again for a number of years and it's relatively cheap, it makes a bit more sense that the reason I don't wanna do it a different way is I don't wanna get air into the ABS. Because although I've got the computer, it can be an absolute pig to bleed those in. There you go. Right, excellent. Now, what do I do with that? Ooh. Better just text the man and tell him that he needs new bump stops as well. That's not gonna come off without a fight. You need new rear bump. There we go. He needs new bump stops. Now I need to get that off. Now what I will do, because it doesn't feel like it wants to come off, it may well be the original brake disc. They don't use the rear brakes a huge amount, so it might well be the original. I'm just gonna pop these back in so that when I give it an almighty smack, it don't fall on my feet. There we go. Oh yeah, look at that. That's why that needed changing. Check out that groove. What a state. 
Right. The other one for the scrap bin. Get some uh, dust off. This is going to blow everywhere. That is pretty corroded. I think I'll have to redress that because the caliper is not going to sit on there nicely. I need access. That I need that out of the way. Okay. So let's take the brake pipe out the top and then find some way of sealing the end. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to go and look at my brake pipe fittings and see if I can find something. If I can't find something, I might make something. But I need to get in here. I'll, I'll give this a quick once over as well. I'm not trying to be silly, but it's just going to waste away to nothing otherwise. And it's still structurally not too bad. But the mating face on the arm of that caliper is rough as. And if the caliper's not sitting dead square, it's just going to continually wear brake pads out and the brakes won't work as well as they should. So if you don't want an absolutely ruined brake pipe union, use a crow's foot spanner, which has got a end on it like that. Stop looking at me. It should be the right size. It is the right size. Don't force it, because what can happen is you can be turning the union, but it can be rusted into the pipe, because the pipe will be steel, the original pipe, and if they're rusted together, you'll just be twisting the pipe round and round, and then you knacker the pipe, and then you have to make a new one of them. There we go. Right. She's playing ball. Right, so what I've got to help me with this is an old off-cut of brake pipe. That will be off a TVR somewhere. That's a bit of copper pipe. Couldn't it? Right. Looks like. And uh, just an old union. And that would have gone up to, judging by the bend that's in it, that probably went up to one of the freight front brake pipes on a Chimera. Um, what I'll do with that is I'll undo this union and screw it into this one, provided they are the same size. I think they are. Citroens normally have their own little funny um, unions with funny sizes, but that's with LHM cars. LHM cars don't have conventional flares in the pipes. You'll see plenty of LHM repiping on the SM, don't worry. What I'm thinking is because although this is a hydropneumatic Citroen, it has conventional brakes. It's not an LHM based car where it has a central hydraulic system and that powers the brakes and the steering and everything like that. The brakes in this car are completely conventional. I think, and Ian alluded to it in one of his videos, and he's probably right actually, I think it's because to get the ESP systems and traction control and electronic brake force and everything like that, they just couldn't have that compatible with an LHM system. Or because people were mincy about it, I don't know, but I imagine that's what it was. So, in theory, all I've got to do is undo this union here. Can't really see it from there, but it's the only place the camera can go. So this is the bleed nipple, as you've seen on the new caliper. So I just need to undo this union. I'll pop the pipe out. I've got a bit of movement. It's out of the clips. It's not going to move around a huge amount, but it'd be enough. And just screw this on the end. And the bit of pipe in there has been cut. So the end is sealed up. So hopefully that will stop leaks. That's the plan anyway. Whether it works or not remains to be seen. Ow! It will start to leak a little bit. It's coming undone properly, it's not seized or anything, which is good. Get some of this clean, or I'm running out of oil again. Go through a lot of that. And if this was a brand new system, you'd be able to do this by hand by now. Be finger tight, but... If you've got a really rusty pipe, I mean, this pipe's in good condition. Because um, it's got a coating on it, but if you had a really rusty pipe, you wouldn't just try doing this. You'd get a white brush on the pipe first, because if you start undoing that union, and there's rust on the pipe, it will bind up and you'll have all sorts of unpleasantness. There we go, right, so that's coming out and that is leaking already. And what I'm hoping is just to gently, oh, got less movement in that than I thought, that was a tough pipe. Ah, it was stuck in a clip. Is it the same thread? Please be the same thread. Damn it, it's stuck. Oh, there we go. It is the same thread. Of course, what I don't have is a spanner to do the other end up. There we go. 
that's all that needs. You see? Can you see that? There you go. So, the caliper can come away completely now, which is good. There we go. Oh, look at that. So this is going to be leaking fluid everywhere and brake fluid is not good for paintwork. So best to put the caliper somewhere, well, somewhere where you don't care about really. Now I've got all new uh, pads, bolts, multiple fitting, oh that's a close up. Uh, multiple fitting kits, so I don't need to worry too much about all that, but that does need cleaning up somewhat. So I'm thinking what we need to do is maybe get a grinder on there. Yeah, just reface that. Uh, there's an ABS sensor up there. So I'll just try and clean the back of the toothed wheel. I mean, it's, it's barely got any teeth on it. But yeah, I'll just clean in the back there. So we don't get any dicky sensor readings. Maybe a wire brush on there. <sighs> Painting it is probably going too far, but I'm thinking a bit of dinner troll maybe um, would be the right thing to put on there just to preserve it. So, grind time. Safety first. I'm going to take the grinder to this thing here. Paint remover wheel. Good that, isn't it? Nice and smooth. 